So how then do we manage lithium in pregnancy? Well, one of the mainstays of treatment is that we try to maintain the maternal target lithium concentration in the mother at minimally clinically effective levels. So yes, the word is minimum, but if it's not clinically effective, there's no point in using it. You want to use the dose that is clinically effective and can be used at uh, the lowest dose that gives you clinically effective levels. If possible, we avoid situations that tend to increase lithium levels. So we try to avoid NSAIDs, diuretics, ACE inhibitors, calcium channel blockers. And we also watch for sodium-restricted diets. For example, sometimes these are used to manage preeclampsia or edema, and that also can cause increased lithium levels. So we have to watch for that. We watch for possible maternal lithium toxicity, which can arise in the event of acute fluid loss, hyperemesis gravidarum, or, as I mentioned, preeclampsia. And we always monitor fetal development carefully. Remember, often a nuchal translucency test is done at 12 weeks gestation that measures the depth of the nuchal fold in a developing embryo. And when it is higher than normal, that increases the suspicion of cardiac defect. Doesn't mean that there is one, but it is a possible harbinger of cardiac defect, and then there would be more tests that have to be done. We want to make sure that a level 2 structural ultrasound is done between weeks 18 to 20 of gestation. Every part of every organ is looked at. And if, for some reason, there is a further suspicion of a cardiac defect, a fetal echocardiogram can then be performed, which really will hone in in detail on the health of the heart. How then do we dose lithium in pregnant bipolar patients? Well, we try to obtain twice daily dosing because this minimizes peak lithium blood levels and it reduces the risk for side effects. We check the preconception lithium level to guide dosage both during pregnancy and the postpartum. Additionally, lithium levels are variable during pregnancy. In one study, first trimester lithium levels decreased by 24%, by the second trimester decreased by 36%, and by the third trimester decreased by 21%. So it's variable, but generally lithium levels decrease during pregnancy and the dose then needs to be adjusted. And we adjust it not just for the level, but also for clinical efficacy. We want to monitor lithium levels carefully about once every three weeks during the first 34 weeks of gestation and weekly after 34 weeks until delivery. During labor and delivery, we now maintain fluids and we do not discontinue lithium. After delivery, we monitor lithium in the mother twice a week during the first two weeks post-delivery with the goal of achieving the preconception lithium level. If possible, we adjust lithium doses based on the preconception history of the response clinically to lithium, and we aim to keep the lithium in the therapeutic blood range. Key points here then are lithium levels tend to decrease in pregnancy, so levels should be monitored and the dose adjusted to maintain clinical efficacy. Lithium should be continued during labor and delivery, and lithium levels should be monitored twice a week during the first two postpartum weeks with the goal of achieving preconception mood-stabilizing levels.